What's up, hobby friends? My name is Casey, and welcome to another Miniature Rescue. This week, let's take a look at the brand new Duncan Rhodes paint line, Two Thin Coats. This last week, Brent from Goobertown Hobbies and myself have been attending GAMMA, the Game Manufacturers Association Expo in Reno, Nevada. While we were there, we were able to get a preview of a ton of new stuff coming out or in the works in the world of tabletop gaming. Companies like The Army Painter, Turbo Dork, Games Workshop, Parabellum, Warlord Games, and others were mostly the things that we were focused on. But there was also a surprise waiting for us. Duncan Rhodes Two Thin Coats paints were announced by Asmodee, one of the largest distributors of games and hobby products in the world. So of course we made our way over to the booth and made sure to take a look at the paints. We hung out for a while and asked some questions and that really led right into testing. There were some papers out and some craft brushes for making swatches of colors, but there was no way we were gonna be walking away without trying this stuff on an actual model. Luckily, I happened to live in Reno where the convention was being held, so I went home, put together some models real quick, and brought them back for Brent and me to paint right there in the middle of the convention floor. I also brought all of my brushes and supplies in my new fancy Miniac box. Super handy. I decided to paint up the little Duncan dog that was provided at the booth, and I grabbed one of my favorite little goblin minis for Brent. We were at the booth for a good solid two hours just painting and talking to folks about what we thought. It was a very enjoyable experience, but there was just one problem. We needed more time, and the convention was coming to an end really soon. So under the cover of darkness... No, not really. They were really awesome and just let us take home a review set to make these videos. Not all of the 60 paints in the line, but really close to all of them. So let's take a look at these paints in depth and really start to get a feel for what they can actually do. Before we really get into it, I need to state that we were given a pre-production set of these paints. The bottles, lids, and some of the paints aren't exactly final, but these are pretty close to what we're pretty much gonna be getting when they ship out. The first thing to look at is how the paints look on black and white base coats. So we took some Napoleonic miniatures from Warlord Games and primed them black on one side, white on the other, with a little gray overlap in the middle. The neat thing about Duncan's paint line is that each block of colors comes in a triad, so you get a base color, mid-tone, and a highlight. So no matter what you're painting, you don't need to guess what kind of paint is coming next. We laid out our models and got to work. Montage. The end result is pretty nice looking. A lot of the colors really pop on both sides of the spectrum, and the triads for the most part have good separation and look pretty nice together. There were a few colors that were a little less than stellar, most notably the blues, but the reds, yellows, and greens look super vibrant and really nice. To take those blues a little bit further, I decided to paint up my little Duncan dog again. I went over the armor with the blue triad and finally ended up mixing in a little bit of white to practice my non-metallic metal armor whatever kind of thing you wanna call it. The blue is just really desaturated. The base coat is probably my favorite part of that blue triad, but I'm not a huge fan of how the mid-tone and highlights look. I would have loved to see a bright magic blue in this initial set. I think it's really gonna be missed when it comes to things like plasma coils. Still, the paint blends nicely, and it looks good. And most importantly, it feels good. I also imagine that these colors aren't gonna be the only colors in the Duncan Road lineup forever. Let's take a look at some of the other applications. The company Titan Forge had some super sweet samples at Gamma for us to take home and paint. So I primed them and gave them a quick zenithal highlight with white ink. I grabbed some purple from the lineup and went over all of the skin with my airbrush. The paint thins nicely and the airbrush shoots very smooth. So I did a couple of thin coats to start on this awesome space gator. I followed that up with a mid-tone green from the top as well as some final highlights with the top of the green triad. The greens in particular are very vibrant, and I like how far apart the base coat and highlights are. The bright green is bright, and it brings in a much more fantasy vibe to this range. After those initial layers through the airbrush, it was time to switch to a regular brush. One of the biggest questions about this paint line for me was how well the metallics were going to work, and what kind of spread we had in tones. 
Luckily, there are a variety of colors in this metallic range that includes a dark bronze, several golds, and silvers. For the Space Gator, I went with a medium bright silver on the armor panels. The paint lays down just fine and has a good tone to it. I'd say it's not the absolute best silver that I've used, but it's also very far from the worst. It definitely works, and the variety of metallics will be nice to have on hand. Once again, I thought I'd give that blue another shot. That way I could see it mixed in with some of the other more vibrant colors. So I painted this gator's pants blue. I'm pretty sure he's not wearing denim, but I felt like he kind of needed some. Now that there are a few base coats on the model, I thought I'd try some wet blending on the cape. Wet blending is when you lay down a rather thick and wet coat of paint and follow that up by using a different color to blend into it on the actual model. The paints mix together and when they dry, they look super smooth and creamy. This is a great way to get color transitions from almost any color pretty quickly. In this case, I'm gonna use a purple for the cape and transition into the next step of the triad. I'll then follow that up later with a highlight of cloth texture. Something that I'm starting to appreciate more and more about these paints is how nice they feel to blend together. Having a pre-designed triad does make it a little bit easier to get that next highlight. Now that the majority of the model has been filled in, I want to test out one of the washes. Normally on silver, I would use a black wash to get those recesses and get that contrast, but unfortunately we didn't end up with a bottle of that black wash. So instead I'll be testing out the dark brown. The first thing I noticed about it was how thick it was. It makes sense seeing as the rest of the normal paints are rather thick as well, and they're meant to be thinned to a consistency that makes sense for the job that you're doing. I decided to thin this down to more of that Games Workshop level runny and applied it to the armor panels. For me, the wash was a bit weird, even thinned out. It still felt like I was tinting the color purposely towards brown instead of getting that color in the recesses. I don't think I'd want to put this color all over everything like I might with something like an Agarax Earthshade or a Nuln Oil. This honestly feels more like contrast paint than anything else. So Brent and I were talking about that and decided to test that theory out. Putting the washes that we had straight out of the pot onto models, and then even comparing some of the colors to actual contrast paints. The results kind of speak for themselves. They are very similar. They flow similarly, they sit on the model similarly, and they even have the same kind of finish. So my thinking was, okay, if these are pretty much contrast paints, how would I use them on the models I have in front of me? So I decided to test that out really quickly on a cool little zombie figure from Titan Forge. I mixed together some green with the dark brown wash I had left over, did a quick coat all over the model and highlighted back up with a variety of brown and green tones. I also thinned out that same brown wash into a glaze and introduced that into my shadows near the end of the paint job. It was nice to have access to this tool. And it's nice to see that the and it's nice to see the range of paints can stretch that far in its initial run. But personally, I would have preferred a classic thin wash. On the other hand, I know a lot of people are going to be very excited about that versatility. These paints feel very deliberately designed to feel a certain way and to give new painters an idea of where to go with their painting. The triad system makes sense, and giving painters the option of consistency by starting out with a thicker paint will make it easier to learn more advanced techniques down the road. Next up, I did want to take another look at one of the metallic paints, specifically that bronze. I grabbed another one of those Titan Forge models and decided to do a quick workup of purple to pink for the scales in a bronze patina armor for contrast. The metal went down well enough. I didn't have any issues thinning it down and getting a smooth finish. I also decided to mix a little verdigris using the top of the blue and green triads. The colors mix well and give a good teal that definitely passes for weathering on this armor. Now I've used a lot of metallic paints over the years, and while this isn't the absolute pinnacle, it's better than quite a few that I've used. The question does remain though, is this a good set of paints, and should you feel good about your Kickstarter pre-order? Well, since I am one of the people who did contribute to that Kickstarter, I can say that I'm pretty happy that I did, and I can't wait to get my hands on the rest of that set. The paint is high quality, and the triad system does take some of the guesswork out of where to go next. I did have some issues with the blue not being vibrant enough, and I'm not a huge fan of the washes, but for a first outing, this is a very solid set of paints. I would love to see this set expanded to include more technical paints, which I've heard are coming, as well as more vibrant fantasy tones. Overall, these paints feel great to use, and I know that I can get nice results on my minis. Of course, not every paint line is perfect, and there's definite room for improvement, but having said that, I hold a lot of hope for the future for this line, and I can't wait to see where it goes. 
Before we close out, I just wanted to let you know that there will be a video about these paints over on the Goober Town channel as well. We both got to try them out and we wanted to make sure and cover a variety of points about them. So Brent will have a unique take on these paints and you should go take a look at that right now. Thank you again for joining me on another Miniature Rescue. If you like something about this video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey and I will see you in the next video.